Hello everyone and welcome to Quick Med, where medicine is explained quickly and easily. Today we will be discussing hemolytic disease of the newborn, so let's get to it. In this video, we're going to be talking a lot about antigens and antibodies. An antigen is a substance that induces the formation of antibodies, and with hemolytic disease of the newborn, we're talking about a specific type of hemolytic anemia known as alloimmune hemolytic anemia. And the prefix allo refers to non-self antigens, and so in this case, we're talking about a foreign antigen that will result in the production of antibodies. So let's now talk about the major blood groups, which can be broken down into our ABO antigens, which we will talk about a little bit later, as well as our non-ABO antigens, and in particular, the RH antigen. There are also some other minor blood group incompatibilities that can result, but because these are not as significant or as common, we will not discuss these in this video. The first antigen we will talk about is the RH antigen, which is, as we said, is a non-ABO antigen. It's also known as RH factor or D antigen. If a person is RH positive, this means that they have the D antigen present on their red blood cell surface. If they are RH negative, that means that this D antigen is absent. So now let's talk about how the RH antigen is inherited. If both mom and dad are RH negative, then the child is always going to be RH negative, 100% of the time. But if we look at a different situation in which mom is RH negative and dad is RH positive, then the child could be either RH negative or RH positive. And this can be a problem because if mom is RH negative and she is pregnant with an RH positive child, then that antigen can be perceived as foreign, resulting in the production of antibodies, leading to hemolytic anemia. And this phenomenon is referred to as maternal sensitization, which means that mom, who is RH negative, is exposed to an RH positive antigen from her fetus. And this is perceived as a foreign antigen by mom's immune system, resulting in the production of antibodies. So you might be wondering, how does mom get exposed to these foreign antigens in the first place? This can happen in a few ways, the first of which is through transfusion with RH positive blood. But more commonly, pregnancy with an RH positive offspring, plus you get the mixing of blood between maternal and fetal circulation. And this can happen through childbirth, trauma or medical procedures, or any ruptures in the placenta during pregnancy, such as with placental abruption. Because typically, when mom is pregnant, the placenta does not allow for any mixing of blood between mom's blood and baby's blood. Let's take a closer look at the placenta where we can see here the umbilical cord as it meets the placenta. And then within the placenta itself, we have our chorionic villi, which are these finger-like projections of placental tissue. And this is where diffusion and only diffusion happens between maternal and fetal circulation. There is no actual mixing of blood. And diffusion is the only way that allows for nutrients and oxygen to be carried over to the fetus under normal circumstances. Let's take a look at what happens in mom's blood before and after sensitization. So before sensitization, in an RH negative mother, she will not have any D antigens on the surface of her red blood cells, and she will not have any antibodies against D antigen. But after sensitization, the mom obviously again does not have any D antigen on the surface of her red blood cells, but now has antibodies against the D antigen. And so she has produced antibodies as a result of being exposed to this foreign antigen. Let's go over some key points that you'll need to know with RH incompatibility. The situation is mom is RH negative and baby is RH positive, and it usually does not occur in the first pregnancy. And this is because when mom is first exposed to a foreign antigen, she initially produces IgM antibodies, which do not cross placental tissue. IgG antibodies can cross placental tissue, but they take some time to form. And so usually this sort of reaction does not occur in the first pregnancy. Exceptions include if mom has had a transfusion because she has had a longer time to produce those antibodies. RH incompatibility is usually more severe than ABO incompatibility, which we will be talking about next. And we prevent this by giving mom ROGAM or RH immune globulin around 28 weeks of pregnancy because this can help prevent hemolytic anemia from happening should mom be RH negative and pregnant with an RH positive baby. Let's now talk about ABO incompatibility. There are four major blood groups to know here, A, B, AB, and O. O basically means that there are no A or B antigens on the surface of the red blood cells. Let's also look at the phenotypes and the genotypes associated with these. With an A phenotype, the genotype can either be A and A or A and O. With a B phenotype, the genotype will be B and B or B and O. With an AB phenotype, there is only one associated genotype, which is A and B. And with an O phenotype, you also have just only one genotype, which is O and O. So let's take an example here. Let's say that mom and dad are A and O and A and B. 
The possible genotypes are A and A, A and B, A and O, and B and O. And the associated phenotypes would be type A, AB, type A again, and type B. With ABO incompatibility, A and B antibodies are naturally occurring. At an early age, we naturally make antibodies to antigens found in food and bacteria. And ABO incompatibility is usually less severe than RH incompatibility. The reason for this is that most are IgM antibodies, which again, do not cross placenta, and neonatal RBCs actually poorly express both A and B antigens. We also have other cells besides our RBCs which express A and B antigens. To understand this a little better, let's look at mom's antigens and antibodies depending on blood group type. If mom has blood type A, she has the A antigen on her RBC surface as well as anti-B antibodies in the plasma. If she is blood type B, she has the B antigen on the surface of the RBCs and anti-A antibodies in plasma. If she is of blood type AB, she has both A and B antigens on the surface of her RBCs and therefore she has no anti-A or anti-B antibodies in plasma. With blood type O, there is neither A nor B antigens on the surface of the RBC and so mom has both anti-A and anti-B antibodies in the blood. And so with ABO incompatibility, mom is of blood type O and this is because she produces both anti-A and anti-B antibodies in her blood and baby is of blood type A, B, or AB. And this can occur in the first pregnancy, unlike with RH incompatibility. And this is because, as we mentioned earlier, the antibodies are already present from an early age. ABO incompatibility is more common, but is less severe than RH incompatibility. And this is for the reasons that we had mentioned earlier, which is that most of the antibodies are IgM antibodies, neonatal RBCs express the antigens poorly, and other cells other than the RBCs express both A and B antigens. All right, so let's do a practice question to solidify our understanding of this. We have a one-day-old neonate who has hemolytic disease of the newborn. The parents are both RH positive, but IgG is found in the mother's blood. And again, both parents are RH positive. Which of the following parental blood types is most likely to cause this condition? So let's break this question down a little bit further. We know that both parents are RH positive, which means that the baby is going to be RH positive. So here we're not dealing with an RH incompatibility. And because the question is asking us which of these blood types is most likely to cause this condition, and we know that we're dealing with an ABO incompatibility, we know that mom has to be of blood type O. And so we look through the answer choices and we see that it's really only choice E that has mom listed as blood type O and father as blood type AB. And so here, dad can actually pass on either an A or B antigen to the fetus, and this can be perceived as a foreign antigen by mom during pregnancy. So let's look at why the other answer choices are not correct. If we look at the answer choices where the dad is listed as being of O blood type, we can tell that these will not be correct because if that's the case, dad will not give the fetus any A or B antigens that will be perceived as foreign by mom. Answer choice C is left, which has mom listed as blood type B and dad as blood type A. And in this case, ABO incompatibility can occur because dad can pass on an A antigen to the fetus, which can be perceived as foreign by mom during pregnancy. However, the question is asking for the most likely cause of this condition, which as we said earlier, occurs when mom is of blood type O. In summary, the fetus inherits blood group antigens from both mom and dad. Fetal blood somehow gets into maternal circulation, and as a result, mom makes antibodies to these foreign antigens. Antibodies are then able to cross the placenta, attacking baby's RBCs and leading to hemolytic anemia. Let's compare RH incompatibility and ABO incompatibility. As we said, RH incompatibility is less common but more severe than ABO incompatibility. Mom is typically RH negative and the fetus is RH positive. And this typically happens in the second pregnancy because it takes time for IgG antibodies to form. Whereas with ABO incompatibility, mom is of blood type O and the fetus has either A or B antigens. And it doesn't really matter what pregnancy mom is in because this can happen in any pregnancy. I hope you found this video helpful. As always, good luck studying everybody.